One of the things that is really difficult in computing is to detect both memory leaks and race conditions. Race conditions or a whole set really of concurrency related issues. Now memory leaks, this comes about typically because of problems related with how implementation is done in a language which is not garbage collected. Java and many languages have garbage collection in it, but that garbage collection gets in the way of performance sometimes, requiring us to use more powerful languages that do not use a garbage collection model, such as C or C++. If we're in those environments, though, we do have to be careful to make sure that we have our memory managed appropriately because all it takes is a little problem with memory management and we can end up with a crash because we run out of resources. So Valgrind is a tool that can be used to detect these types of problems and give us some guidance as a software developer to resolve some of these issues. The other type of problem, concurrency related issues, be them race conditions, deadlocks, or the whole host of concurrency related issues, these are prevalent across all languages. We can run into concurrency related pro problems in Java, which is a garbage collected language, in C++ using C++11 threads, in C using POSIX, in any environment where we have a concept really of multiple tasks running simultaneously, which tends to be multi-threaded. So in this video, I want to demonstrate how on a simple piece of code, we can use the Valgrind tool to help us see what's going on. So in this particular piece of code that I've got here, I have a thread method. What it's going to do is just read back a global variable that's called count here. Notice it's marked as volatile. And it is going to increment it by one each time we go through this section and this section. And I'm going to go through this loop, um, basically loop count times. So loop count is set to one million times. Um, so when this thread is finished running, whatever value was in this count variable here will be incremented by two million for each time or each number of threads it runs. So I'm going to have in my particular program here two threads that are going to be started, which means my loop count, it, whatever my loop count is, my expected result when all is said and done is basically going to be four times loop count. If we are correct, we're going to say that we're okay. Otherwise, we're going to say there was a problem in that the result isn't correct. Very, very simplistic implementation example of synchronization problems and it's been also set up so that we can see potentially a memory problem. So in this particular case here what we've got is a malloc so this is a C language implementation but you'll notice there is no free so each time we come through this loop we are going to effectively be mallocing memory which means we're going to have a small memory leak in it. So this code if I run it right now like so, we can see that it is routinely failing here. There it passed on the final time, but it's going to fail more often than it passes. So what this means now is, as a software engineer, we'd have to go in and try and figure out what's going on. You've seen the code just a moment ago, so this is much easier because it's a pretty simple piece of code. How could we use these tools to help us? So Valgrind, as I mentioned, is a tool that will let us do things to test code and to find these types of memory leaks. So there is a lot of different tools inside of Valgrind, a lot of different features and capabilities. One of the things is this memcheck, which is very, very powerful and very, very capable. We're going to just barely scratch the surface of what you can do with this. Um, because of all the various capabilities. And then we're also going to be looking at this other tool here called Hellgrind. This is a thread error detector. So it's going to detect synchronization errors. Um, and it can do this in C, C++, or Fortran if you are using that environment. Um, it is based around using POSIX or POSIX-derived um, synchronization problems. Um, so you can see all the different things that can happen here basically as long as you're doing something that is POSIX synchronized. So 
let's start in our first case here by saying, hey, I would like to try and see, is this program having any problem with memory? You'll notice this program didn't crash. Typically, what we find is if a program crashes, that's a sign of a memory leak or a memory problem. But in this particular case, it's running. What I want to do is verify, is this OK with memory? So to do that, what I'm going to do is run my tool here with Valgrind, and I'm going to do a leak check. This is going to tell me if there are any memory leaks within this program. So as I do this, it's running in the background. You'll notice it's going to run just a little bit slower because Valgrind is going on. And if we look at what's going on here, we get this report out here. Now, in this particular case, we didn't have any problems with the execution. It actually passed the count. But what we see is the heap at exit, we had 16 megabytes of memory that were being used by the program. We had some losses. So if we look here, it's telling us right now that in start or from start thread this thread add method line 29 there is a memory leak associated with that we are definitely losing this amount of memory if this program were to continue on and on and on this would really be bad and it might even result in the program crashing due to an out of memory condition so i can use this to go in and look and see okay line 29 let's look at where line 29 is Aha, uh -huh, I see a malloc right here. That malloc is mallocing the size of long to temp, but we never free it. So what I'm going to do is go down to the bottom here of this method, and I'm going to take and free this block of memory. So every time we go through this loop, we are going to malloc something on the heap for this temp variable and then at the end we're going to free it. This is not necessarily the best programming style the way this is being done but it's being done more so to demonstrate the allocation of things that are going on to the heap. So if I save this and rebuild my code here what we'll see here is now when I do my leak check it's still running about the same amount of time we get to the end here in use at exit zero bytes in zero blocks there is nothing all heap blocks were freed no leaks are possible so at this point what we have done is we have fixed the memory leak problem with this code and i can run it again here just to make sure because what i'd ideally like to see happening is that we would have a failure here of our count we're not getting that right now let's run our code with this and see what happens if I can get it to fail. And of course, it's failing right now. So why might it be failing? Well, given that we know that this is multi-threaded code, it looks like this is something that's a random type of behavior. Random behaviors where sometimes something works and sometimes doesn't in multi-threaded code can be a very, very strong sign that there is a problem with a concurrency issue in the code. So let's take this now and run this same tool, except what we're going to do is we're going to use the Hellgrind tool that's built into Valgrind to actually be able to look at synchronization issues. So if I do that here, I've got a command that I'm going to run here. Valgrind, I'm going to set the tool to Hellgrind, and I'm going to be running the program, which is POSIX Mutex Example. This will go through, and you see here that almost immediately it is finding that there are some race conditions in the code or possible problems with threading. If we look at thread, possible data race during read, at in this case line 31, conflicts with the previous write at line 33, and possible data race 33. Previous right, 33. We're getting a lot of these things happening here at line 33 in POSIX Mutex example, it looks like. Um, here we see again that this is occurring basically as we have created in our code here where the threads are actually getting started at. So what I want to do is look at 
this line here, 31 of thread add, and see, can I fix this particular problem? And of course, I know I can, because I've actually designed this code so that it's synchronized properly here. What I want to do is take and put a lock around this right right here. So what this will do is this critical section that starts right here and goes to right here will be protected. Now I'm not specifically right now going to fix this other problem with the second critical section here um, because I want to be able to again demonstrate that the tool can still detect that there is a potential race condition going on here. Now in all reality code that unlocks and then relocks the, uh, the mutex right afterwards is probably a bad sign. There should be just to put a comment in here a lot more going on in here. We really should have a lot of stuff happening there in this line 37 to 38 if this is a realistic program. Um, again, this is designed for understanding. So from here, what we're going to do is now take and make the code up again. And we're going to run with the, the hell grind tool again. And now we see that there is a problem, it looks like, between 34 and 42. So if we look at where 42 is here, it's a little bit farther on. That's this second block right here that there's a problem with. The second problem, again, this is the part that I didn't synchronize properly. So what I'm going to do in the code is uncomment those comments that I had to force the code to be synchronized there. Abort the way this is executing right now. And now I'm going to run it again, except now I've got these protected with synchronization constructs. And so it's going to most likely run a lot slower because we are synchronized, because we are fully synchronized in, in the code and, and everything like that. But it will ideally now run through correctly and give us our final results here at the end. So we see right here that the program was able to complete running correctly and we have an outcome that is okay matching this 4 million. If I run this code now without Valgrind, first off we'll see it executing a lot faster because it doesn't have the extra overhead of Valgrind. But the other thing about it is it is much more consistent in its behavior. So what we have just seen here with this is what we can do using Valgrind to detect memory leaks in our programs and to detect race conditions and other concurrency related issues within execution of code that is multi-threaded in nature. That's going to bring this video to a conclusion.